Hi, let's talk about Clipper configs. So, printer.cfg, uh, what is it? Well, config files in Clipper are kind of the, uh, the backbone. It's, it's everything in Clipper. Um, we flash the boards with just the general firmware and then we do all the changes in our config files. It's, it's kind of the, the easiest way to do it instead of having to flash new firmware to our, to our printer every time we change something. So I'm going to try to sit down and go through what uh, it does and how it functions. I won't go into all the details, like all of the lines and all of this stuff. I'm going to get, give you kind of an idea of, of what it is and how to start editing yours. So let's move to the desktop PC and have a look at it. All right. So um, I'm going to start off by just giving you some resources where you can find deep uh, deeper explained or more explanations of everything because this is going to be just a quick overview on different parts of a config. So the first one is of course the config reference. Um, it's on the Clipper website and I'll have links in the description. Uh, this explains all of the different parts of a config uh, in much more detail than I'll be doing right now. The second one is uh, the part of Clipper, the Clipper website that has all the examples. So there's a big community out there that has created um, basic setups for most printers. Um, so when you're converting a stock printer to a Clipper printer, this is a great place to start. And it is of course in example configurations and there is a link to their config directory on GitHub. And it is right here. And this is all different printers or different boards. So we'll have like a big tree tech mini, but we'll also have something like a Creality board uh, printer or a any cubic Viper. Uh, there's a lot of different printers on this list. Uh, all with pre-made configs. So this is a great way to start if you don't have a config. Now I'm going to assume that you already have Clipper running and you have uh, a Clipper config on your printer. So in on, on a normal printer, this is my Rook 2020 Mark 1. Uh, you can go to your machine tab and you can find your printer.cfg. And this is the file that we are going to be talking about today. So let me open up a couple of files and I'll show you the basics of how this works. So this is a um, file or a config file for the uh, Big Tree Tech Mini, the E3 V3. And I'll try to use this to explain how this all works. So let's start off with the stepper motors first. <clears throat> so these stepper motors, they need to be assigned their pins. Normally on a config, you don't need to touch this unless you're creating a config from scratch, from nothing. Um, generally that's an expert move. Micro steps is your resolution on your motor Rotation distance is how far your printer needs to, to rotate for a set number of movements. These are usually set by either your, um, your belts, pulleys, or your lead screws and stuff like that. Next, you will have the end stop pin, which is, you guessed it, the pin name for the end stop. And then we'll have some, some, some of the stuff that you might want to mess around with. It's the position end stop, position max, and homing speed. These are all variables that you can set. This will change the size of your printer. So your position max would mean that your 
printer X uh, axes will not, will, won't be able to move longer than 235 millimeters. And there's more, of course, more parameters to set. You can set, set minimum, maximum, and, and um, you can uh, set your end stop position to something else than zero. Uh, there's a lot of variables here. So this all applies for stepper X, stepper Y, and stepper Z. Then we'll have the, in this case, the TMZ 2209 stepper X section. So this is the stepper driver. This is the actual driver on the board and not the motor. So this sets the uh, pins, which again, you probably won't need to touch. And then your run current and stealth chop. So these are um, kind of important for you to know about. So your run current is how much power does your board supply for your motor? Uh, increasing or lowering this will change the operational um, parameters of your motors and might make it run hotter or cooler. Skipping, no skipping. Um, generally, you would want to find the exact set setup for your specific motor and use that. Stealth chop is quite easy. It's silent mode. So it, if it's at 999,999, it's on. If it's set to zero, it's off. Now I'm just going to go past the motors at this point because they're quite simple. And I'm going to look at the extruder because this one does a couple of things. It controls the motor, yes. It has the same pins as the other motors do. But this one has your nozzle diameter, your filament diameter, and your rotation distance. Now this is the single most important line for you to know how to edit. And if you didn't know, there are calculators out there uh, that will show you how to do this. I highly recommend Rolohan's uh, Clipper Calculator. I'll leave a link in the description. Now the extruder section also has your heater. And this heater is your hot end, of course. So there's a, the pins for the heater, the pins for the sensor, the type of sensor, and then you have your PID. So this is your, um, your values that control your heater. This helps your power supply and your motherboard to work together to get your heater to the right temperature with the most efficiency that, that it can. You will also be able to set your minimum and maximum temperature. So anything above or below this, these numbers, your printer will shut down. Next, we have our heater, which is the same concept as the extruder, the hot end. It's the exact same, but the values might differ because it's a different type of heater. Next, we'll look at the different heater fans. So the one that's called fan and only fan that is your part cooling fan. It will always be the part cooling fan. You can add parameters to this or you can just run it as is. Next you'll have something like your heat break cooling fan. That is your hot end cooling fan. And this is the fan that will help you cool down your, the part of the hot end that attaches to your printer. Next, we have a controller fan. This is, of course, the fan that controls, the fan that cools your controller. Easy PC, right? And then we will look at this, these two lines right here. These are very important. MCU is the name of your board. So this is the line that you would have to put in the ID of your board specifically. So if you want to see how to do that, I leave a link to Rolohan's Clipper video and where he, where he goes through all of this and sets it up. And finally, we have our printer config in the printer config. So this sets the type of printer and your maximum and minimum values. Now these are usually controllable in other means. You can make your slicer overrun these, but they generally set homing speeds, um, maximum speeds for movement and stuff like that. 
now let's look at a slightly more involved Clipper config. This is the config file for my Rook LDO config that I've created. And this has a couple of different features that I thought I would just help you understand. So we have these lines that are just say include and then the name of a file. Now, if I open up my printer right here and I look in my file system on my main cell here, I can see all of these files, macros, mon one, macros, two, macros, homing. And this just means that if I include it here, Clipper will read that file. Now, in this case, my macros files are there just because I don't want to clutter up this one printer.cfg file with a bunch of macros. They take a lot of space and they're often not edited and generally you don't need to, to look at them that much. So if I go back to my, to my um, printer and open up my macros one, I will have my print start. This is the, uh, the process that my printer will use to start a print. So this will differ from printer to printer or your preferences when you set it up. Same with your print end and your, your prime line. And these all have different functions. Macros are a whole different topic. If you want me to make a video about macros, please leave a link in the description and I'll get to it. <clears throat> Next, you can see that this printer has two MCU lines. It has the MCU for the actual printer board, but it also has the CB1, which is the Pi for this printer, added in. Uh, this way I can control pins and temperatures and stuff on the actual MCU. This printer also has temperature sensor set up specifically for it. This way I can monitor the host and MCU temperature in my main cell window. So if I go back to a um, to my main cell and go to my dashboard, this printer has the MCU temp. So if I wanted to, I could add the Pi temp. On this specific printer, I don't, but on others, I do. Don't ask me why, I don't know. Okay, a little bit about editing the config file. Uh, I've had some questions about where to put things in your config files. And the, uh, the simple answer is it doesn't really matter. Uh, the slightly more advanced answer is that it needs to be referenced. Uh, so this bracket defines all of these values. So if I want to add something to this, I will have to add it under here. The order of these doesn't matter at all. You can, if you want to, you can uh, cut those out and paste them right there. That will still function just fine. The, the uh, actual brackets themselves, so you can put this anywhere in the config and it will still work. Uh, so you can, if you want to organize your config uh, by alphabetical or however you want to do it, um, you can do that. So you can, for instance, these are not used. You, you won't change them. So I could, if I wanted to, I can take this entire section and cut it out and I can go to the bottom and just note this line. Do not do anything under that line. So I can go here and that will still work just fine. Now you can probably see that there's a lot of lines that start with a hashtag. And that is because Clipper is programmed to not see anything that's after the hashtag on a line. So if I say, hello, Clipper will be able to read that. However, if I do a hashtag, hello, Clipper won't see that at all. That's only for 
our eyes to see. So we can use that to our advantage by adding the in lines or like I like to do, I like to do um, kind of headlines for each part of my config. It's easier for me to find stuff um, and it's a little bit pleasing to the eye when you're scrolling through a config. You can also add in uh, comments or instructions, or you can even save old uh, values. So if I wanna change this run current value right here, I can write in the new uh, value. So I'll write in 1.2, I'll do a space and a hashtag. And now I have that old value saved. So in case I wanna go back to the old value, all I need to do is remove that 1.2 in the hashtag. So this is a good way for you to keep values that you might want to go back to, or if you have notes that you wanna to give to yourself or someone else if you're sharing the file. You can also use this to just disable entire parts of your config. So if I wanna disable Say I want to disable my bed screw section. There's no reason for it, but if I want to, I can put a hashtag on all of these lines and that will be completely ignored. One good example of that is that I have my um, some macros that are there to just slightly move your motors for troubleshooting reasons. And it's normally not an enabled because you don't really need it, right? So normally it has a hashtag in front of it. Now, if I do remove that, then my macros will appear in my Clipper uh, dashboard. So this is an easy way for us to remove or uh, simply ignore uh, anything that's in our config. Finally, I just want to show you this section at the bottom of a config file. So this will always be at the bottom of a config file. And as the uh, text tell you to, do not edit anything unless you know what you are doing. So if someone tells you to edit something, you need to trust them before you do something about that. Uh, so let me show you what this would look like in an actual printer setting. So this is my Rook 2020 Mark I again, and I have quite a few values saved in this section. Now, if you look at the values for our heater bed in this, in this example, these values are saved down here because we did a calibration of my, our PID values. So if we scroll up to our heaters section, our heater bed, we can see that our PID values up here are commented out because these are what was there when we started our PID tune. And then when we save the new values, Clipper will automatically use what's down here. This also goes for stuff like your probe and even your bed mesh is also saved down here. All right, I think you might have a general idea of what the printer config is. It's a rather big topic and this is just scratching the surface and if you want to learn more let me know in the comments and if you didn't know i have a patreon now and if you're a patreon member i will personally help you set up your config okay so if you like this video please hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already please subscribe and i'll see you in the next video um, I got stuff to do.